Welcome back. Our next presenter is Keith Conway. He's an exhibit specialist and mount maker at the National Museum of African Art as part of the Smithsonian in Washington, D.C. Uh, he will be speaking about unique mounting techniques for gold jewelry. Uh, come on up here, Keith. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. All right. I wanted to thank William Griswold, the president of Cleveland uh, Museum of Art, for having us here and me here. It's great. I also wanted to thank Dante Rodriguez. I want to uh, thank Philip, Philip Brutz for doing all this work. It's been amazing. Okay. Mount making for silver and gold at the Smithsonian National Museum of African Art. Let's do some objects. All right. The National Museum of African Art is displaying the delicate work of Omani silversmiths and other works of art from the Swahili coast in the ongoing exhibit Connecting the Gems of the Indian Ocean. The Mount Challenge was to free float these silver treasures about three and a half to four inches from the wall, many with multiple delicate chain work attached. There we go. The first object today is an amulet. It's called a Kirsch Kitab, silver and glass beads. beads. An Omani artist created it. It's from the Sultanate of Oman, amulet disc with Quranic inscription. On the left, you can see the amulet disc tilt, would tilt backwards without a full support at 90 degrees. The chains also overlap and fall in vertical lines without sufficient support. There's a lot of chain work there. There's over a dozen. There's a central chain at the top, loop at the top, one on either side. And the four inch suspension added tensile weight. So I decided that a combination mount of acrylic, acrylic support dolls, and metal pins treated with acrylic coatings would free float the art. And that's on the right. Here it is. All right. Let's take a look at the inner workings of the silver necklace mount and supports. All right. Number one, I marked it. That's the acrylic support back. It extends all the way up and also holds the up, also is attached and holds the upper chain work. It had to be connected and be one solid piece for it to work effectively. Number two, you see above there that two. That's for the drilled areas and armatures. I had to drill, uh, let me see. That was about a 3 16 hole at the top and some smaller holes at about a number 41 gauge bit and that held the uh, small wires that hold the chain work. Okay, number three, a drilled hole for an acrylic dowel rod and flange. You see in the center at number three, just above number three, I found out that drilling the acrylic when you attach the rod creates a much stronger bond because it's also surrounded by 360 degrees of acrylic. Uh, four is the acrylic dowel rod, which is 3 8 inch. And uh, that was sufficient to hold up this uh, heavy beadwork and uh, amulet. And five is a cute little sliding flange that I created. Now I moved it back so that you could see it in this photo so the, the mount didn't block it. But it actually pulls forward and with methylene chloride creates an additional attachment between the back and the rod and makes it really strong. So you're never going to have any problem, any kind of seismic uh, issues that, that occur or, or the weight itself. All right. Here we go. To make that little flange, I drilled the acrylic draw, dowel as well as drilling the other pieces of acrylic, I find that you need acrylic drill bits. Now, normal drill bits are about 118 degree angle on the sides. They have a tendency to make your project blow up. 
shatter. It's really disappointing. And so I use these drill bits, these uh, acrylic drill bits have a more severe point. It's about 130 degrees. There's the manufacturer's name at the bottom. Uh, and this uh, set of drills was used to do 3 16 I also used this, uh, I also drilled a dowel to make that flange. And there's the end result. Let's see it. Here it is, the Omani amulet, cursed katab. Free-floating extension allows a closer view of the artist's skill and details and information. The acrylic back supports 80 small metal acrylic support armatures and provides a transparent backing for the delicate chain work. Want to do another? <laughs> Here we go. An Omani necklace with an amulet box called a Hertz. Silver and Indian rupees. Omani artist from the Sultanate of Oman. Take a look on the left. The heavy beads and four thick coin shapes mounted on a fibrous rope with a rectangular amulet box. And to the right, the decision was a five-part metal mount was designed. The top mount supports the heavy beadwork. You can see this is the top mount connected into a flange, the lower mount going into the same flange. Closer look. The inner workings of the silver amulet mount support. Number one. Oh. Go back. Is that the bottom one? All right, good, thank you. Okay, number one, metal support back. Number two, a flange added to support both top mount and wall mount. Let's see, let's see. All right. Three, a threaded addition and nut to attach amulet box support mount. That's right here. That's a very small mount that goes inside that box top loop and a small threaded material that was brazed onto that back plate with a number 40 nut put on there to support it while it was supporting the rest of the uh, object. Okay. Number three, threaded addition nut to attach amulet box support mount. Sorry, <laughs> here I go again. Getting ahead of myself. Four, top ring mount with brazed armature to support metal beads. And five, I put heat shrink added to the top mount on the armatures that held up the loop to protect it while it was on exhibition. All right. Now, here's the tank again. <laughs> this is the tank, normal ta V tank of uh, acetylene uh, used uh, to do all the brazing work. I used a very small tip a uh, 332 diameter hole tip or number 41 diameter hole opening to do all these micro welds that are involved in this jewelry. All right, let's do some gold. From the Bannock gold fields of the Senegal River, the National Museum of African Art is exhibiting the delicate skill of the Tukalor and Wolof goldsmiths of Senegal as the museum celebrates 50 years in golden opportunities, the museum is displaying selected gold art from the Marion Ashby Johnson collection of the late 20th century. Here's the first challenge. A pendant necklace, a Wolof artist from Senegal, Africa. 
here's a cute mount, a three-part brass and titanium mount. Number one, the necklace chain support mount. You can see that at the top. Two, the lower mount has flanges for both the upper mount, proper right, and the wall mount, proper left. That's here and here. This loop fits into that in the back. This is really a little more of an eye than it is a flange, but it is a flange and it ties it off so you can make it variable. You, the top loop is very, has to be very precise. So I noticed that you couldn't get it even close to a 16th of an inch. So what I did was I made this loop a little bit longer so that it actually ties around 360 degrees after you get the perfect position. And I thought that was really effective. Three, a center flange, flange fits wall or deck rod. And you can put titanium or stainless steel in there, a much more robust metal. And it does a, a very effective job at a length, anywhere from five to eight inches. And that's that flange right there. Okay, the mounts are treated with conservation approved material like acrylic felt, coatings, and polyethylene. On the left, the upper mount hoop supports the chain work and is adjustable in length using 18 and 24 gauge brass. On the right, the lower support mount then fits into the mount hoop, making a secure two mount marriage. Next. A gold choker, a Kalani, Tukalor artist, Senegal, Africa. There. On the left, let's take a look from the back view of the inner workings of the gold Kalani mount work. On the left, the upper hoop supports the chain work and sets into the flange on the back side of the lower mount. Oh, say it again. There connects to there. The lower mount on the right moved input into position supports the object medallion flower section. A third wall mount supports both. The last, a gold ring, a Karani, a Wolof artist from Senegal, Africa. On the left, titanium wall rod, 1 16th into a brass support mount. On the right, you can see the object upside down, and you can see the mount from that view. Um, and it shows the flange. There. The support mount and flange are designed specifically for the object, in this case, a gold finger ring. The flange allows the integration of a titanium wall mount Thus, they can be used together in perpetuity. There, confused mount maker. Art at the National Museum of African Art on exhibition in 2016. Silver from Oman, gold from Senegal. All right, here's an advertisement. <laughs> the Smithsonian will serve as co-host of the American Al Alliance of Museums meeting May 26th and May 29th in Washington, D.C. On May 27th, the National Museum of African Art join a festive evening of African culture hosted by Dr. Jeanetta Cole, African-inspired hors d'oeuvres, savor fine wines, dynamic rhythms of African music. The last one, it's a tour I'm giving, but I'm sorry to say it filled up. Thanks. That's my talk.